one. Today I thought I would do the um, 20 crafty questions with Crafty Al. And I saw Michelle do this on her channel. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of do a VR to that. And while I'm answering the questions, I thought that I would do a little bit of colouring in my colouring book. And lately I have been obsessed with these little bugs. They're very steampunk. Okay, so the first question is, where does your channel name come from? <laughs> so I suppose it came from my blog and I wanted to have like my own little place on the internet where I share my imagination and my imaginations was the I don't know the closest URL available to what I wanted so I went with that and then on YouTube my imaginations was taken so I had to add the UK and um, which is a little bit annoying because it makes my channel name a little bit hard to say but it doesn't matter and the other thing is I was the idea for my blog name I was in church one day just sitting listening as you do and I just had this picture in my head of some cursive writing and a little butterfly above it like a icon or a logo I guess um, so I guess technically that's where it originated from and then it moved to my blog and then on to YouTube okay the second question is what type of crafts does your channel focus on so I think everybody knows by now that it's mostly paper craft related but I do like to add in some artsy grungy stuff as well um, I would probably say that I was into art before I was into crafts so most of my crafty things have a bit of an artistic spin on them Okay, next question is where else do you share your creations online? Um, I've got quite a few places yeah so I have my blog um, but quite honestly I don't keep that up to date anymore so I need to make a decision on whether I'm going to keep it or repurpose it for something else um, so yeah there's my blog and then I have a Flickr account which is where I've stored all of the photos of the things I've made for absolutely decades so if you want a good laugh and to go back and see how I used to do things <coughs> many years ago and see like how things have changed I will leave the link down below as long as you um you're nice <laughs> you can laugh as hard as you want just be kind <laughs> And then I've got Instagram, Pinterest, uh, I don't have a Facebook group, I have a page which I was going to put my cards on that were for sale but I haven't, I'm not a massive fan of Facebook but I do really enjoy being part of Julia's group so I will leave that in a link down below because I do share quite a lot of my um, design team makes in there as well. Okay. Number four, how long have you been crafting? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, that's really hard to answer. So I started to do crafts and stuff in my teenager years. And um, 
I did graphic design for my GCSEs and I had to do a lot of foam core projects where you have to build the layout of a building and then decorate inside different designs and things. So that was quite crafty. Um, so I would have to say my teen years, but I suppose I really started buying craft supplies when I was at university. I started buying my Pro Markers and yeah, so I'm what, 34 now? So I would say a good 15 years, possibly 20 years. The next question is, what is the first quality item you remember making? <laughs> um, well, apart from like school projects, like the um, foam core projects and woodwork projects and things, um, I'd have to say probably Christmas cards. My memory is not very good. I get a lot of amnesia, so um, there might be something that I did before this, but it doesn't matter. It's about what I remember. So, yeah, I didn't have any card making supplies. I literally just had some red card and a pair of scissors. And I remember I made these small red Christmas cards and I had a square popped up that I had drawn like lines on this popped up piece and with a gold pen and I'd put nail varnish as like faux baubles on the design. I should probably recreate that, I think that would be a fun um, recreating my art or recreating my craft video. But anyway, yeah, it was Christmas cards and I made them with a gold gel pen, some card and nail varnish, which is rather random, but I haven't changed much. I still do the most random things. <laughs> okay. Next question. What's your favorite type of craft? What? I've got to pick one. That's an evil question. Um, if I say paper crafts, that kind of includes everything, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. If I had to choose one type of paper craft, I'd have to say card making because that's what I do the most of. But I really love journaling as well. Um, it just, especially in the last sort of five years since I've been going to therapy and. I found it really helped me tap into things that I wasn't able to verbalise and it's been quite healing. So yeah, one of those. Uh, which of your creations is currently your favourite? I think that might be worse than the what type of craft is your favourite question. <laughs> because it's like they're your babies, you can't choose a favourite child. Okay, like not literally your babies, but you put so much time and effort into them. Um, what kind of... Well, it says creation, so I suppose it doesn't have to be a crafty project. So if I had to choose my favourite thing I've ever made ever, it would probably be my abstract self-portrait. Um, I will try and take a picture. In fact, it's on that Flickr link I mentioned, so I will leave a link down below to that. And the reason why that was probably going to be my ultimate favourite is because <laughs> it's going to make me feel a bit teary, but I actually I was having a really hard time at work, and it was at the beginning of I don't know, I don't know if it'd be dramatic to call it a breakdown, but it pretty much was. And um, I'd had a panic attack in the lift at work, and I just felt all of these emotions all at once, and it wasn't something that I was used to feeling. Anyway, I'd come home from work early, my boss told me to go home and see if I felt better and 
I was sitting in my craft room talking to a really good friend of mine called Elisa and she was sewing and I was painting and we just really enjoyed each other's company and it was so so restoring um, given how drained I was after all that had happened with work um, and I just really remember enjoying her company while painting that and then sadly a few months later she passed away so that um, that painting means quite a lot to me okay next question um, what do you do with your finished projects wow if they don't get stolen I mean donated <laughs> to my mum-in-law usually in the variety of Christmas cards but sometimes she does ask me to make Mother's Day cards and things like that and um, so she usually pinches a fair chunk which I don't mind because otherwise I would literally just be hoarding all these cards that I've made and I can make quite a few in a week so um, yeah I do that she takes quite a lot and then obviously I send quite a few out um, then recently I started to because I had so many I started to look for creative ways to get them out of my house <laughs> um, so I offered my local church if they would sell them in their little cafe they could keep the money they give me like um, a pound or something towards the cost of making it just so that I can afford to buy some more glue to keep making them but I don't make any money out of it um, and it's just a way for me to raise some money for my local church because they do a lot of um, stuff in the community like food banks they have there and then they have um, different art groups for the elderly and um, exercise and stuff for the elderly because there's quite a large elderly population here and um, I've really seen how much they get out of just having somewhere to go and meet up with their friends that doesn't cost a fortune on their pensions and stuff um, and they just seem to really be enjoying their life which is lovely um, I think they might also do some kind of work scheme to help people get back into work but I'm not entirely sure but anyway they do lots of great things for the community and um, so I like to give them my cards to sell and we don't sell that many but it's just a little something that I can do um, and that's about it really I might start giving donating them to charity shops. I'm not sure yet though. I have to find one that I uh, can get to easily. If you could learn a new craft or art, what would it be? Oh my gosh, I want to learn everything. <laughs> oh, I have to pick one. Mm. Well, I'd have to pick something that my husband wouldn't divorce me over, so... Hmm. Well, recently my friend Katie bought me a wood burning set and I did try it and I quite enjoyed it. Um, so I think I would like to master that a bit more because I already have the materials and I think it would be fun to get a bit better at that. Okay, next where do you create I create at home in my craft room what would your ultimate craft space look like that's kind of easy for me because I like my craft room the way it is <laughs> the ultimate 
uh, the only thing that could possibly make it better would be if it was self-cleaning <laughs> because I hate cleaning I hate tidying up after myself it just like feels like a waste of time when I could be crafting um, so it would definitely be some kind of self-cleaning thing even one of them robot hoovers would be kind of cool because I struggle to bend over and get all the tiny little bits off the floor like the paper scraps and stuff um, I must have to come up with a way soon to deal with that either to stop them getting on the floor in the first place or to something to catch them in so that I'm not constantly bending down picking tiny things up okay number 12 is have you had ever had any crafty accidents or mishaps I'm laughing because I've had so many it would be hard to to summarize them um ooh, that's hard which one do I pick I've done so many stupid things I've cut my knuckles off the skin off my knuckles in the guillotine um oh, I've stabbed myself with a crochet needle many a time um Else. I don't even do crochet that's the ironic thing and I still managed to stab myself with one <laughs> that was pretty special um yeah I'm always chopping things off my I have to cut my nails off by accident with my guillotine um oh the worst one I would have to say was when I was crafting something and I knocked my glass of Pepsi over it went all over my artwork and worse than that it went all over my MacBook <laughs> so that was a disaster I was like which one do I save first <laughs> so that's probably the worst one um, it was quite funny afterwards but at the time I was really annoyed okay number 13 do you have any funny crafty stories to share hmm I don't think so. I find lots of things funny though, so I can't think of a specific story. No. Nah. What's your favourite drink or snack whilst crafting? Oh, I always have a glass of Pepsi, although not today, funny enough, but usually. Um, Pepsi Max Cherry is my absolute favourite unless I can get raspberry that's quite nice too um, favourite snack I don't really snack much especially not while crafting because whatever I get on my fingers I usually get on my project so snacking is not really a good idea it's far too hazardous for my liking although I think in one of my videos I did find a set of chocolate dark chocolate mints um in my stash and one of my subscribers was finding that quite funny okay number 15 do i watch or listen to anything while crafting yeah i do listen more than watch um i might put youtube on if I want to follow a tutorial like I'm trying to learn how to do something so um, when I was making my Alice in Wonderland mini album I was watching Effian cards to give me some kind of idea of what on earth I was going to do um, but for the most part I don't watch things because I find that I'm so focused on like looking at what I'm making that I I just can't concentrate on watching something as well like a TV show that's just not going to happen um, but if I want to listen to something I might put a TV show on that just makes me laugh that kind of like a comedy that I can just listen to and laugh along with um, I quite like to listen to audiobooks and I also like to listen to music so yeah I might have my Google hub thingy playing some music on Spotify or something um, what's your biggest craft purchase regret? Oh man, I've got a list. <laughs> I would say as a general rule though, it's always things that are 
craft products that are branded as artist quality and they just never are like very rarely they are um i'm not going to say never because you know you never know one day there might be one that's actually what it says but i remember specifically my husband buying me all of the spectrum noir pencils and it said that they were artist quality and i went to do a little picture in my journal and i wanted to have a black background um and i was coloring with a black pencil and honestly i got to about that much of the pencil left the first time i used it just trying to get the background to be black because it didn't have enough pigment in it and it drove me nuts so those kind of things yeah because they're really expensive the other things I would say is probably my zig markers I ended up selling them in general I just don't think I like watercolor markers I don't find that they work the same way as watercolor and I'm a bit of an art snob so that's probably more of my preference than the fact that they're not a good product but yeah watercolor markers and artist craft products drive me nuts number 17 what's your favorite craft purchase wow uh blah, blah. i don't think i could pick just one if you if you emptied out my craft room and told me i was allowed to have three things back it would be my pro markers these pencils which are the faber castell polychromous and probably my printer so I can print out Julia's digis. <laughs> I can't pick one, I'm sorry, I need them all. <laughs> um, but technically, Pro Markers was the only thing I purchased because these were a gift, and because I'm on Julia's design team, I she gifts me her did you so that I can make projects for you to share with you guys so technically my favorite purchase is my pro markers there you go I totally cheated but I don't care <laughs> number 18 if you could only choose one adhesive for your crafty projects what would you choose hmm I feel like I might have to do another sneaky answer and say hmm, probably ranger multi matte medium um, as you guys know, I have tried just about every single glue, apart from art glitter glue, so I can't comment on that, but I've tried the majority of glues up until the last couple of years that have come out, um, and Ranger Multi Matte Medium is the only one that I've tried and have found to be the best at not showing up if you do a bit of spillage which is really important for me when I'm making cards because I just don't want I just think it looks tacky when you've got glue spodges everywhere it doesn't look very professional so range of multi matte medium because of that but also because I can literally stick anything with that stuff like I, you can stick on top of glitter which is really hard um, you can s stick it um, plastic things metal wood pretty much anything to paper for a card and I just love that stuff it's great and then to get my 3d element I would probably just use some craft foam which isn't technically an adhesive and just put my multi matte medium on each side to make it dimensional so I could have a flat and dimensional type glue that would work for anything okay number 19 nearly there guys um, if you could only use products from one company for the next month which would you choose oh well that one's really easy I would have to choose Julia's Digis so JMC Designs um because i'm just loving playing with them right now and i need them <laughs> and i love the fact that she makes um the sentiments to go with it 
So you basically just have to add paper and you've got a whole card. And even if I couldn't buy paper from a paper company, I could just make my own backgrounds with jelly plates and stuff. So I would do that. Um, next one, number 20. Who is one crafter that you watch and follow that you think needs some love from the crafty community? Hmm. Well, Crafty Michelle tagged me, I suppose. I don't know if that's a thing. Did you tag me, Michelle? I don't know. You said I should respond, so I am. So I'm kind of that as a tag. So I don't know if I can choose you or not. So I would probably go for Tracy Wellham. She is so talented. She makes the most amazing mixed media stuff. She she did this piece the other day that looked like Renee Mac I think it was Renee McIntosh and Tim Holtz had a baby. It was so cool. It was so like Oh, you just have to go watch it. I'll leave a link to that video down below. And she does loads of reviews. She does some haul videos. She does, um, I th think I've seen her do some magazine reviews. She does all kinds of projects. She makes cards. She does mixed media -y things. I just think she's great. And I have no idea why she only has the amount of subscribers, subscribers as she's got. Because I've seen other people who are as good as her who have got way more subscribers and I'm like seriously you guys are missing out you need to go watch her channel so Tracy Wellham and the bonus question is what is a non crafty channel that you love to watch oh man <laughs> um, I watch so much YouTube um, I quite often listen to lectures yes I am that's sad I do listen to lectures um, Hmm, I don't know if I can pick one. Um, hmm. Maybe if I go by topic. So I like to listen to a lot of health st stuff. And um, there's a couple of health YouTubers I really like. One is Abby Chris. I think her name is Abby Christian or Kristen. She is a nutritionist and she reviews all sorts of people and their diets and she is hilarious. Um, so I quite enjoy watching her videos. Um, the other person I like to watch is Unnatural Vegan because um, she basically calls people out on the absolute rubbish that they spout and she's quite cynical which kind of amuses me too. And um, yeah i just like her then the other stuff i watch is mental health related and i used to watch a lot of katie morton which i don't anymore but i also like to watch um seminars by dr alan enshaw and he is a neuroscientist who looks at the formation of personality and the brain from pre prenatal so in the womb till early childhood and I just find everything that he says and finds absolutely fascinating and he he take he also practices as a psychologist as well and he practices what he learns about the brain in his own life and I just think that adds a level of integrity to him that I really admire so I don't think he has a channel but I kind of just channel hop to find his lectures wherever I can so hopefully that makes sense <laughs> and that's the end of the questions so yeah I hope you've enjoyed listening to me talk about absolute rubbish and answering the questions and attempting to colour and talk at the same time which I kind of failed at quite badly but hopefully, excuse me hopefully this video is not too long and you still enjoy watching it Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for watching to the end and I'll see you all next time. Bye! 50 awesome points to everybody who got this far in the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can find out 
when I release new videos and there are a couple of videos here for your delectation if you so desire.